Hi ladies, Ashley here from Glow Body Personal Training and today we are covering the entire nutrition portion of my 10 minute plan. Because bottom line up front, I can give you the best workouts all day long and if you do all of those workouts to a T, amazing. But if you're missing the diet component of how you should be fueling your body to promote recovery of that muscle breakdown, you're not gonna be getting the most out of your workout. If your body is covered in an excessive layer of fat and you keep building muscle, absolutely amazing. You have some awesome lean muscle tone under there, but if you can't see that tone that you are going for, you just keep slaving away at your workouts, but nothing changes in your diet, you won't physically see a change in your body, even though you're getting stronger, fitter, feeling better, unless you learn, retrain yourself how to eat so that we can reach a calorie deficit, so that your body will slowly lose excess body fat over time in a safe and maintainable long-term way so that you can start to see the results of all of the hard workouts. So my goal for you is for you to have a very healthy relationship with food. The last thing I want to happen is by me talking nutrition with you, just like you're my best friend right here in my living room. I don't want to create um, this idea that you have to have a perfect diet and an orthorexic mentality, an obsession with healthy eating because if you are doing too much of what you think is a good thing and it starts to make you feel not good, grumpy, unhappy, maybe it's actually not making you better. So I believe in an extremely balanced approach to nutrition and this is just what works for me. You will not be following a meal plan in the 10 minute plan. Instead, I give you my family's 30 favorite go-to recipes. They're all 30 minutes or less. And this is the stuff that I go to the grocery store and buy the ingredients for and make on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. This is stuff that I love, my kids love. It is all kid approved husband approved because if it doesn't, it doesn't make the cut. I get out of here. I don't run an a la carte line. I can't make a bunch of different things for dinner. So it is foods that your family, I believe, will like too with simple ingredients and their simple recipes to follow. All right, I get asked a lot of questions about diets. Ashley, do you do intermittent fasting? Do you do paleo? Do you do keto? Are you vegan? Are you vegetarian? Whole 30? Do you eat sweets? Do you drink alcohol? I get all of these questions. You guys, I don't follow any particular diet. And when I do, if I have in the past, which I've tried a bunch of different things in the past, it literally made me um, waste brain space kind of obsessively thinking about what I couldn't have and thinking about my next meal. And I just felt like I wasn't focused on the things that I should be. I was not being the full potential woman or mom that I could be because I was thinking about all this other junk related to food and really I just wanted to have a more balanced and healthy approach to eating. So dieting does not work for me. It actually does the opposite. It creates an unhealthy mindset and makes me want to eat more of the stuff that I can't have or once I don't have it for a while, it makes this feeling that you just want to have a bunch of it because you felt restricted. And I believe in intuitive eating, which means if my body is really, um, really wants something, I can have it in moderation. And it eliminates that fear of deprivation. Like if, if, you're, if you know you're about to go on a diet, and you're like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to have brownies and ice cream next week, then it like makes you feel like you better stock up now because you're not gonna have it in the future. So eliminating that feel, feeling of being deprived can help me just have one brownie or maybe two and not have to eat all of them because I know that I can have more tomorrow or I could make them next week or have them at a party in the future. It's not an all or nothing. It's like I can have a little bit and be satisfied and that's okay because they're still going to be there tomorrow. And that is a, a big mind shift that has really helped. Next question is eating organic. Now I wish I could say I eat all my produce is organic, but the truth is it's not. The things that I really want you to buy organic, like the things that are worth going a little bit out of your way for, is buying organic tea, um, garlic, you can actually notice the difference in the stickiness of garlic that you buy that's not organic versus the, the type of stickiness that is organic. And because um, garlic is definitely in a cancer fighting, extremely high in antioxidant food, we want it to be organic. The other, the other ones that I really try to buy organic are all from EWG, Environmental Working Group's top 12 list. And that kind of changes annually. So you can check out, check out EWG's list on your own. But the stuff that I buy 
on a regular basis are apples, berries like blueberries or raspberries, potatoes if it's available, organic sweet potatoes, stuff that I don't really worry about. Oh, and spinach, definitely organic spinach or organic lettuce. Stuff that I don't worry about as much are bananas, oranges, watermelon, cantaloupe, anything that has a peel, like a hard exterior that you're peeling with a vegetable peeler or you're peeling off. I don't worry about it as much. Of course it is better to buy local because the sooner you eat something from the time it was picked from a field and you're eliminating shipping time, the greater antioxidant value and micronutrient density that food is going to have. If you're in a place where you don't have access to organic foods, I feel you. I've been deployed to Afghanistan. There wasn't access to organic foods. It's better to just eat vegetables, clean them off, eat fruits, clean them off really well in, um, in water. Sometimes use a produce brush and just eat your fruits and vegetables and just lose any guilt or concern because you're doing the best you can with what you have. And our bodies are actually designed to fight toxins like lead and other toxins from um, from pesticides and stuff by eating these vegetables. So we are naturally detoxifying ourselves by eating them. So if you can't get organic produce, don't worry. If you have availability to buy it frozen, always choose frozen organic over canned um, because you're gonna get more bang for your buck and nutritional density out of your frozen foods. Canned foods, what you wanna look for is BPA free on the can so that we don't have hormone distributors um, leaching in, especially if it's something acidic like tomatoes or diced tomatoes. That stuff, the BPA leaches even more into acidic canned vegetables. You eat those foods and it is, um, it's bad for reproductive health and just hormone distributors. So we don't need any of that by fresh, then frozen, last choice is canned. Next question, the staples that I always have on hand. I always have five to seven varieties of fruit. For example, I'm going to have cherry tomatoes every week, apples, oranges, bananas. I buy a lot of bananas. I'm talking like probably 20 bananas a week for our family. And then a couple of bananas always go into the freezer for smoothies. And my smoothies in the plan are so good, you guys. We have creamy beet smoothie, peanut butter cauliflower smoothie. It's amazing. It kind of tastes like a peanut butter milkshake. And then ginger detox smoothie, which is fresh and green and bright, but it's not a disgusting green smoothie because I wouldn't drink it if it was. It's actually tastes really good. And then my post-workout pink smoothie is super fun. I find myself drinking that a lot, especially um, while I'm nursing because it just gives me a little boost of energy in the afternoon. The other things that I always have on hand are carrots, cucumbers, bell peppers, all types of nuts. I buy two kombuchas a week for myself, eggs, a lot of eggs. And um, I like it because it's just a simple protein in the morning and I eat that with Ashley's everyday breakfast. But I also have breakfasts in the plan that don't include eggs, like my peanut butter and jelly overnight oats and then my main maple oatmeal. There's definitely other options there if you don't eat eggs. But my family, we do eat a lot of eggs and I do enjoy them. I try to buy cage-free and organic to get best quality and making sure that um, if, it's, if the diet of the chickens are supplemented with DHAs, I like to have DHA um, in the eggs as well. Next question is regarding protein supplements. I give this one a lot. What BCAs do I, BCAAs do I take? What protein supplements? What um, other vitamins do me and my kids take? I don't take any protein supplements. And yeah, it's just, I don't feel that it's worth it for me. I think it's kind of a waste of marketing money unless you have restrictions in your diet in which you can't eat adequate protein from either plant sources or from animal protein sources. I don't take pre-workout. The best pre-workout you can take is just a cup of coffee and it's totally okay. It's not gonna be a diuretic. We just have a cup as long as you're drinking enough water. And for multivitamins, I take a prenatal vitamin. I've been taking it for years. I have it linked on Ashley's faves on my website. It's my favorite product. And then sometimes I take the DHA depending on whether I feel like I've had enough naturally occurring in my diet. Like have I had any salmon this week, chia seeds or flax seeds? If I'm not getting it, then sometimes I'll be like, yeah, taking a DHA, that's, that's a good idea to do this week. I don't have my kids on any type of vitamins. They do eat what, what we're eating, so you eat a very varied diet. I don't feel like we need it. Vitamin D is something I think about a lot, especially for babies, for my infant Ava, and I do make sure to get her outside every day, and I'm getting myself outside every day too, as well as the kids, because if you're deficient in vitamin D, you're just gonna get sick more often. The most common vitamin that Americans tend to be deficient in is B12. 
B12 and your iron. And you can get that from hemi iron, from meat sources, or you can get it from non, non hemi iron, from plant-based sources like seeds and quinoa and beans. And so I get, I get a little bit of a combination, but even if you're getting all non hemi iron, which is proven our bodies aren't as, um, we don't absorb it as quickly as we do hemi iron. But here's the thing, our bodies are actually more efficient at taking little bits of non hemi iron, little bits of iron throughout the day versus like a big chunk of hemi iron all at once. So if you are on just following a plant-based diet, it's absolutely fine because you're getting, you're getting your iron throughout the day in bits and pieces and all different types of, of plant foods, your grains, your beans, your vegetables. So you can, completely get enough B12. The reason a lot of Americans, both meat eaters and not meat eaters are deficient, and they say it's around 40%, so that, that statistic is questionable. But we know a decent amount of Americans are deficient is because of the current farming practices. We, we all filter our water now, which is really important, so we're not getting that iron we used to get out of the water. And then our vegetables are so thoroughly washed from, from pesticides and other, um, other things that are in the soil that we're scrubbing away all of that dirt that used to be on there back in the day, like our grandparents ate, getting rid of all that iron from the dirt and not consuming it anymore has reduced our B12 over time. So what can you do? You can cook in a cast iron skillet sometimes, super easy. And then you're actually leaching some of that iron from the cast iron skillet, which is a good thing. And then you can also just Make sure you get a little dirty once in a while. Go outside, play with your kids, garden, walk around barefoot. Just that, that dirt touching your skin. Our skin is the largest organ in our body. It absorbs some and will increase your iron level. As women, it's important to get adequate calcium, whether you are breastfeeding like I currently am because if when baby needs calcium, she or he will leach the vitamins that you're intaking first to make sure that they have enough in their diet. And if you are thinking you want to get pregnant in the future, you need enough calcium because we want you to have a healthy, normal menstrual cycle, not get amenorrhea, not get missed periods. And we want to make sure that you can also have a menstrual cycle, but be still depositing, have enough calcium and vitamin D in your body to have healthy bones. So in this plan, we get plenty of calcium. We got broccoli, your spinach milk of choice make sure that you're buying a milk of choice that has calcium in it i tend to buy 30 calorie almond milk it has calcium it's fortified with calcium in there and a lot of a lot of different types of milk besides cow milk have your calcium added and vitamin d added to the milk greek yogurt as well next question is for ladies who get up and work out first thing in the morning you do not need to eat before you work out these are short and sweet workouts you're going to have enough glycogen in your body for it to use it process it and use it as um, readily available glucose for your exercise to give it your all to cover 30 full minutes worth of working out without you feeling like you must eat something before now, after your workout, I want you to recover well. So you need to replace that, that burned glycogen with new fresh glycogen, as well as your protein and lots of water. So I always think water first and then fuel post-workout. And you can have my post-workout pink smoothie, peanut butter and jelly overnight oats, main maple oatmeal breakfast, Ashley's everyday breakfast. Any of those are great options in the morning when you're on the go. Or if you're really in a rush, you can just grab my mini protein bars and, and have a snack for the car. For you ladies who stay up really late at night and you work out at night, you do not need to eat something after your workout if you're not hungry. Now, there's new science that shows that your overall consumption of carbohydrates, protein, and fat throughout the 24-hour period is more important than what you get in that 30 to 30 minutes of post-hour workout window, um, as scientists used to say. So there's, there's mixed science out there about it. And I do believe personally that as long as you're getting in enough throughout the day, you don't have to rely as heavily on that post-workout meal as scientists once thought. If you are hungry though, you can have a banana or get a, a grab of nuts or a single serving of Greek yogurt. But I don't want you having anything that's over 200 calories because you really don't need a lot of food right before you go to bed because you're about to just go into a, a sleep mode and we don't even just have a full stomach while you're sleeping. What are my go-to snacks during the day? I love to have my creamy almond and beet smoothie, my peanut butter cauliflower smoothie, ginger detox smoothie, raw energy brownie bites, these are so good, pumpkin chocolate chip muffins, just simple snacks. Also, I always, always, always have carrot sticks on hand and hummus. 
I like putting some salsa in it because it gives it a little spice and reduces your caloric intake overall versus eating a half a container of hummus, which is really easy for me to do. So if I pour a good amount of salsa in there and mixes it up. Also cucumber sticks, cut them in the long sticks because kids find it more fun to eat that way. I don't know why, but it works. And you always have your fresh fruits. Instead of just having fruit as a snack, I like to pair it with a fat source though. So I like to have fruit with some nuts, keeps me fuller or longer, or have half of an avocado, put a little bit of olive oil and um, red wine vinegar on it with some salt and pepper and just scoop out the half of avocado. It's a really satiating snack and is going to meet that craving when you're feeling like you need something fatty like sweets and just have that avocado instead. Give yourself the calories and fat your body's craving with extreme micronutrient density versus just reaching for cookies. Just see if that satisfies you first. Next question, Ashley, I feel like I am addicted to sugar. Well, guess what? I think we all feel like that sometimes because sugar is really addicting. I definitely feel like that sometimes and it's something we all have to be cognizant of. So how can we fight it? Just having your alternatives figured out and know what you like really helps. So the, my go-to treats that I really like are my decadent freezer fudge that's in the 10 minute plan, the strawberry ice cream bites. I tend to just be a chocolate fan, but this is like the one exception. These strawberry ice cream bites, legit taste like ice cream and they are using cashews. Say I'm traveling, I'm at my parents' house. I'll just do something like two grabs of Cheerios, one grab of peanuts and one grab of chocolate chips. Bam, it's like sweet, not too, not too dense and it feels like a fulfilling snack. Other times you just really want something to crunch on while you're driving in the car. In that case, I'm gonna pre-chop apples and have two Honeycrisp apples. It might sound like a lot, but that's okay. Maybe a full bag of sugar snap peas or a full container. You can eat a pound of blueberries. It's like the big for 250 calories. Or you can have three little tiny Munchkin Donuts from Dunkin Donuts, which is around the same calorically, or this big container. So remind yourself, picture, if I'm hungry, what is what am I going to be able to eat more of, but not be consuming calories that just aren't worth it? Because I don't know about you, I would want probably nine of those little munchkin, munchkin donuts before I'd feel satisfied. But if I ate a whole pound of blueberries, I'd be like, yeah, this is a pretty good snack, especially while you're driving or you, you're just, um, need something to keep you going, but you don't have time to make a snack. At the those are some of my go-to snacks and just eating a simple diet at home, keeping those staples in the pantry. I keep all different types of nuts around, pistachios, walnuts, pecans, almonds, peanuts, cashews. We keep all of them on hand and seeds, always having fruits and vegetables on hand. If you buy it, you don't wanna waste it and you wanna eat healthier. So keep those on hand to go to for snacks. And then you have your meals from my, my 10 minute um, workout plan where you get all of your, your meals that take 30 minutes or less, and those are your go-tos. Quinoa pizza bowl, cashew mac and cheese, crock pot Mexican power bowl. We actually had this as leftovers for lunch from last night's dinner. Sheet pan, Greek gyros, one pan rainbow chicken, chicken pot pie soup, vegan sweet potato curry. Even if you think you don't like vegan food, you've gotta try this. A Korean beef bowl, man approved meatless chili, addicting orange chicken, sheet pan fajitas, sheet pan salmon tenders, no recipe enchiladas, grilled monster sandwich, my favorite lunch. Spada, kid approved Brussels. The next question is, can I follow this plan if I have gluten, dairy, or nut allergies? Gluten, absolutely. Can always choose something that is gluten free. A lot of, a lot of the meals in my plan don't require wheat, oat, barley, or rye. And if they do, you can def definitely switch to a gluten-free variety. Dairy, you can always just choose your milk of choice. You can always switch to coconut yogurt. So very simple dairy substitutions in there. I'm always open to using whatever milk or dairy substitution, even um, vegan cheese. All of those substitutions are absolutely, totally okay with me. As far as nuts, there's a, there is quite a few of meals that do have nuts in them but you can always just pick and choose what you eat. And that's the brilliance of this not being a meal plan. These are just me giving you the recipes that work for me. And I want you to take with it, run with it, whatever you like to eat, that's what you should be making and integrating into your diet. So even if you walked away from this meal plan and you started using 10 on a regular basis that you were not eating before, chances are you are greatly increasing the micronutrient density and the volume of vegetables and fiber and phytonutrients that you have in your diet now that you didn't used to simply because you have new awesome recipes that you genuinely love that are actually easy that you will apply in your real life. And 
ultimately, that's my goal for you. If you are a breastfeeding mama, I get a lot of questions from moms who are nursing full time or pumping exclusively breastfeeding. I am currently nursing and before I filmed this video, I fed Ava and put her down for a nap and I was hoping I wouldn't have a leak on one side or the other. Hopefully we're okay, but you know how that is. So I know that you are hungry and you get hungry a lot because I'm right there with you. She's 11 months old, still nursing, plan to go at least for a year until she's totally weaned. But I understand that sometimes when you're up in the middle of the night feeding your baby, you're hungry and your body wants calories. But in the middle of the night, it's not the time to have a snack. So instead, I want you to keep a water bottle in the room that you nurse in, whether it's your bedroom or in the rocking chair or recliner where you nurse your baby. Keep your bottle of water there. That's what you have during the night. And then your body will be primed and ready for breakfast in the morning. But you don't need to be consuming calories, even if you're up in the night for an hour. Your body doesn't need calories in the middle of the night. So quit that bad habit if you have been eating in the middle of the night and instead make a really healthy, hearty breakfast. It is so important for you to get those nutrients in the morning, drink a lot of water, drink tea, you can have coffee, just don't drink too much, totally okay with that, but get your fluids so you can keep your fluid volume high, and exercise will not hurt your, um, your ability to produce milk as long as you keeping your volume of hydration high and you'll know that your volume of hydration is key by the color of your pee. I'm a busy woman. I don't really like to measure how many ounces of water I'm drinking a day, but I keep this baby with me and I make sure that my pee is a pale yellow color. If it ever hits amber, you know that you're already dehydrated. Even if you're just 1% dehydrated, it increases your performance. So how well you can do on your workouts and then it decreases your metabolism as well. We don't need either of those things. Drink a lot of water. If you're seeing that your pee is often clear, you're a little bit overhydrated, and that can be a bad thing too. So we want that pale yellow color, then you know you're doing good. And if you are not a nursing mama, you want to go for the same color in your urine. So don't try to get stuck on a certain number of ounces that you need because over the course of your cycle, in order of the course of what season of life you're in, you may need more or less water than you used to. But if you're going by the color of your urine, that's a tell all. It's going to indicate if you're at the proper hydration level. For nursing moms who feel hungry all the time, I want you to stick to more of a normal schedule. Think about what a preschooler would have at daycare. They set a time for breakfast, morning snack, lunch, afternoon snack, then you'll have dinner. And if you're anything like me, you kind of want a little snack after the kids go down because it's just, you get hungry by that time. You probably ate an early dinner and you feel hungry, so plan for that. But having those set snack and meal times really helps you not be a snack train. And by that, I mean eating all day long, standing in the pantry, having a peanut butter sandwich and being, oh, I really want to have some blueberries and I just wanna have two cookies and I'm gonna have a little bit of chips. And then, you know, it's an hour before dinner and you're like, I'm starving, I need to eat something right now, but no. Remind yourself you should feel hungry an hour before dinner and that you can wait. If it's an hour, you're gonna cook dinner, you're gonna wait, you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna eat when you're hungry, which is actually how our bodies were designed to be. Back in the day, women or people in general just didn't have access to the amount of massive amount of variety and food that we have. And so now it's just so tempting to be eating all the time, whether we're actually hungry or whether it's just there and it's convenient and it tastes good. When you're a breastfeeding mother and you think mentally your stress is high, cortisol is high, you're not sleeping that much. So your ghrelin and leptin hormones, they're all messed up, confusing your brain. You're thinking that you're always hungry because you're stressed and tired and you haven't slept that much. So that's what we're differentiating on is, are we actually hungry? I just wanna leave you with a couple of resources that have really impacted me. First one is Intuitive Eating. It's by Elise Rash and Evelyn Treble. The next one is Eat to Live. It's by Dr. Joel Furman. Now I'm gonna just say right away, he's pretty extreme. I don't um, follow everything that he prescribes, but it's definitely influenced me and motivated me in a positive way to be wanting to consume more foods that promote longevity, that fight cancer, that prevent a whole range of diseases that I know I'm eating in a way that's balanced and wholesome and nutritious, but I don't subscribe to his philosophy of eating no animal protein yet. Now my view could change in the future, but that's where I'm at right now. I eat mostly plant foods, about two thirds of a plant food diet, and I also have some animal protein, but Eat to Live is a very motivating book for you to 
eat healthier if you really want to dig into the science behind it. And then a couple of recipe resources. I like Minimalist Baker, Oshi oh Glows, Cookie and Kate, and Chocolate Covered Katie for, for healthier dessert options. I know that you are going to love all the meals in this plan because legit, they're easy, they are fast. My kids eat it, my husband eats it, I love it. It fills me up and I know when I eat foods that make me feel satiated, I remember that. I put it in the back of my brain and be like, oh, addicting orange chicken from my 10 minute plan, that really filled me up and it makes me feel like I'm not as hungry later on. So when you find those foods that you feel satiated and satisfied, the, the healthy ones that really make you feel good, remember that. And then when you're eating foods that aren't as healthy, like pizza, I love pizza, but it doesn't fill me up for that long, honestly. And I will be hungry an hour, two hours later and really want a lot more food than if I just had had a more balanced, wholesome meal. So if you have a quick frozen meal once in a while, no big deal. Don't be laboring at the grocery store trying to find the most healthy frozen meal or the most healthy just throw in option. It's also what you're consuming the majority of the time. So if nine dinners out of 10 are healthy and nourishing and then once in a while you have a frozen dinner, no big deal, that will not be the result. But if you continue to eat meals that are highly processed, you're eating out all the time and you're not eating foods that you know are nourishing your body, that the volume of vegetables is at least three quarters of your plate at, at lunches and dinners or fruits as well. But it's not mostly a colorful plate and you know that's the fact for you, nine days out of 10, then it's just the opposite. You are what you're doing the majority of the time. So I am looking for you to give yourself grace on days where your diet isn't perfect because we shouldn't be striving for perfection. It's okay to have chocolate. It's okay to have a glass of wine or a beer once in a while if, you're, if you want it. But we're not trying to um, not nourish our body on a daily, all the time basis. So yes, eat your dessert, have some chocolate every day, I have wine about once a week, I have a glass on the weekend or maybe two glasses with Luke on the weekend and that balance keeps me happy and makes me a better person because nobody wants to be around a grump or a mom who is restricting herself and just angry or hangry all the time because you're not consuming adequate calories or you're not consuming the balance that your body really craves and feels good at. I love you ladies so much. I hope this answered a lot of your nutrition questions and I'll see you next time, bye. If your knee has a marker on it, we're creating a big circle, bringing it forward and back. That was one. The ending finisher exercise for fat burn. You're just driving with your legs. Let's go. Headed towards Ava. Here I am with a napping baby upstairs and we are just going to make it happen in whatever space we have. Elbow nice and high before you even kick it back. See the difference here? How you can fit a whole hand under there? Nope, you're drilling that back into the mat. When our muscles are under stress and under tension, that's going to cause them to grow. Minimize the amount of time that this toe touches the ground. Targeting the biceps from all angles. Oh, I feel it on both sides. I want that butt to hit the wall, and that is how we are training. The perfect hip hinge pattern. Stay low, chest is high, core is tight. If you're a mother, you will jump through hoops and do anything make nap time fun. So this workout's designed so that the moving leg is burning and the base leg is also burning. Pause here, lean forward and kick it up. Same arm as leg is forward. We're going to reach it down, lift all, because this is legit. This is not for the weak at heart. <laughs>